Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. Well, it's been a little while since we took a visit over to the channel Starve Harf, and it's good to see he's now 89,000 subscribers, which means he's closing in on that magic 100K, which gets you that silver play button. It's just a nice little, uh, not little, it's a major milestone to achieve for any uh, channel. So I'm excited for him to get close. And I'm excited to dive into this video because this is badly translated British history. This is just one of those fun ways, one of those entertaining, give us a good laugh, but also maybe learn some things, ways to look at history. Uh, he always uh, has kind of the same format, which is to take actual history, run it through a bunch of translations through Google Translate, and then spit it back out the other side and see how messed up the translation becomes. And since this is a topic I know a little bit more about with British history, I'm excited to dive into this one. I'll put the links down in the description to some of the other Star Har videos that I've done in the past. And if you haven't already, check out my fun little video that I uploaded late last night. Uh, just kind of uh, having a good laugh at the expense of myself and Mr. Terry as we both strive toward 500,000 subscribers. We both hit 400,000 at about the same time. We talked about doing a, a bet about who would get there first, and we never came up with anything, and I wish we had because so far I'm just a little bit ahead of him, but a lot can happen between now and then. So, all right, let's go ahead and dive into this one. Wikipedia's timeline of British history through languages with terrible translation quality. This was the result. 55 BC. And I should say this, it's not just about the translation quality. It's also that certain languages, the, the words have different meanings and words translate differently. And so when you run that through several layers of that, it comes out really different. Romanian general Julius Caesar, good start, first invaded Vietnam and found a battlefield scattered off the coast of Kent. So Kent is that part that's kind of in the area closest to the mainland of Europe, and Julius Caesar did attempt an invasion of Britannia, as it was then called, but didn't go necessarily that well. <laughs> what? It's kind of a bridge he, like too far. He invaded Vietnam, and it just was a mistake. He ended up in Kent, which is kind of how you end up in Kent. 54 BC, Caesar invaded the country for the second time and won a third of it, both invading Britain. 43 AD, Aureus Pluterus, along with 40,000 soldiers, invaded Britain, and Clare became part of the oh, Roman Claire. Empire, known for its triumph. 122 AD, Emperor Hadrian ordered the wall to represent the borders of the British capital, Rome in the north. <laughs> yeah, so uh, they figured out that going after what is now Scotland was just kind of a little too much. So finally he's like, well, if we can't take it, we're going to wall them off so they can't come at us. Uh, and actually, it's really fascinating to see how much of Hadrian's Wall still exists to this day. And my friend JD over at the History Underground just did some videos from Hadrian's Wall up north. <laughs> Root New Rome. Bradford, it's the Rome of the North. 197, the emergency was born. The birthplace. The city. 208, the emperor and his son, Kalhara, imposed a warrant directly in England. Cypress and Cali Caledonia built fortifications in Galmon and the Dead Zone. Wow, I don't even know where zone. we're going with that. Is that Scotland? Is that what they call it these days? The Dead, <laughs> the dead Zone? 214. In the UK, Brittany, Gloucester, and the United Kingdom are divided into London and York, respectively. I like how uh, Gloucester's mentioned specifically. The United Kingdom of Brittany, Gloucester, and the United Kingdom. God save Gloucester. So York is a Boricum under the Roman Empire, and there's actually uh, right by York Minster. First of all, if you're ever in England, York is a fantastic city to visit. There's so much history there. There's Roman history, Viking history. There's medieval history. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. I want to go back there and spend more time. Uh, and they've got the Shambles, which is this really cool little area that you can explore. It looks kind of like Diagon Alley and Harry Potter. But York Minster is phenomenal. And right outside of York Minster is a statue to Constantine because he was in Aboricum when he was proclaimed emperor by his men. 259, the leader of the revolution, the Latin Post, declared Britain part of the Golden The Empire. Latin Post. Good. Uh, 270, start building a Saxon coast and increase the penetration rate. So I guess what we're talking about now is, you know, England's such a melting pot of different places. And, of course, England doesn't even exist yet at this point. But you're going to have the Angles and the Saxons coming from mainland Europe. 
Uh, and you have the Britons who are already there. You have Celts that are there. And there's all this mixing. And the Saxon, Saxons are eventually going to settle the areas that are going to become England. That's where you get Wessex, which is the West Saxons. Sussex is the South Saxons. Essex, the East Saxons. Don't you want to increase the penetration rate? 274, General Victor rebelled, bowed to the Argentine, and paid tribute. <laughs> Lionel Messi is the Argentine. Of course, if we're going to talk about Argentina, that's probably the most famous Argentine. The British prisoners. <laughs> it's not a very good rebellion, this. It's like, uh, 286 to 296. This is not Britain. This is not Britain. Wait a minute. I'm it's in Paris. France. Yeah. 287. It retains its power not it. in Britain. I'm waiting. When is he going to show up? That's the real question. And declares itself a superpower. This is some rare it law, you know? I think there's been it law in the past that I haven't paid attention to because, um... Can you pay attention to anything in these videos? <laughs> Car Schick defeats the Charming Empire in a naval battle. 296 Julius Canos defeated England near Leicester. Killed Alexis and withdrew from Fran. <laughs> See, this is not a part of English history that I know a lot about, so I don't have a lot to add yet, but I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> I don't like it when they say they withdrew from somebody. What's that mean? 297, work began on the construction of a new tower near Hadrian. King Stein II returns to Goliath. The first elevator was a shooting range north of the Latin ferocious animus. Right. Okay. I understand. And then, for some reason, this it just skips to 1017. I don't know why. I didn't well, do yeah, because nobody cares about history in the uk until 1066 right i mean there's a lot of fantastic history before that blame wikipedia if you want let me talk to larry page i don't know who owns wikipedia let me talk to mr wikipedia mr wikipedia 1017 she was found to be king she of England. oh it's what? not he it's she london that's huge she law that's probably the biggest thing she's done 1042 at lambeth's wedding he became king of england because of his alcoholism. <laughs> That's how you become king. Succeeding Edward as prime minister. There's no prime ministers until Walpole, and that's in the 18th century. 1057, on the battlefield, his Scottish son, Ma, died on her way to Lamban. She he flashed up she, her, as the pronouns above the Scottish guy that's laying down sideways. Where he became king of Scotland. It's very confusing what's going on right now. So, uh, just... Kind of a little fun fact, they don't refer to a king of Scotland, they call them the king of Scots. Uh, 1086. They're king of the people, not the land. Also, we're just going to skip over William the Conqueror and everything that happened in 1065, 1066. Go right to 1086. The census starts with the results of some mobile books. So this is the Domesday uh, role. I mean, this is uh, when, when they're going to kind of do a... You know, William the Conqueror comes in and he wants to completely take over i mean it's not just enough to get the crown he wants to completely put his thumb down on all of england and so he's going to build castles everywhere he's going to do the harrying of the north and and he's gonna uh kind of get a complete census not only of the people but also of his possessions aren't all books mobile 1100 William was shot during a hunt for a new wild animal in 2019 william the second is Killed in a hunting accident, using that term loosely, may have been murder. 1135, Henry died unhealthy. 1154, Stephen died of tuberculosis, and Henry's 100-year-old nephew, Henry I, was awarded the King of England prize. Congrats. Congrats Goodbye. on the King of England prize. <laughs> so this is where you go from the House of Normandy to the House of Anjou. Uh, now you're going to have the Angevins, or as we refer to them usually today, the Plantagenets. Is that um, quite old to become to get the prize? 1164, Henry II meditated with Markler in the London Constitution to bring the Catholic bishop guilty of peace crimes to court and, and present it in a secular court. You've, you're I, I think we're referring to the whole incident with Thomas Beckett, uh, which was not good times for Henry. Guilty of peace crimes. You've been too peaceful. Here in the medieval period, we have to kill at least three people a day. 
1192, Richard was arrested near Richard Barney the Lionheart. When he returned east on the order of the legendary Australian commander, Leo Batavi. <laughs> so, so Richard the Lionheart is king of England. He only spent six months of his 10-year reign actually in England. He's French like all these guys are at this point. He's not even buried in England. He's buried in France. But uh, he spends most of it on crusade. He's coming back from crusade. I think he's in modern-day Austria and he gets captured. Um, he is he is held and uh, is ransomed for like the you know, you hear this idea of a king's ransom. That's literally what this was. They pretty much bankrupt the country of England to ransom him. Uh, he was a terrible king for England. Richard was released after Austria received fifty tons of cash. Twelve thirty seven. Henry the Second of Scotland and Alexander the Second signed an agreement claiming British ter territory in Scandinavia, Canpol, and Westland. Where are these places? Where's Canpol? 1249, Alexander III of Scotland died, and Alexander III ascended to the throne of Scotland. <laughs> He's back. The return of the king, literally. 1266, the political entities of Scotland and Norway inherited the Spanish Treaty, which led to the demarcation of the what? Soviet what? Union. Uh, 1272, after the death of Henry X Nom X. I don't know, is that actually Roman numerals? He's one of the numbers, one of the he one of the Henrys. Edward received the throne of the first generation. It's, it's Henry the Third and his son Edward the First, the one we call Longshanks. You see him in Braveheart, comes to the throne. Englishman. 1277, English United, which lasted until 1283. I hope it's you. <laughs> Hope it's you. <laughs> and to twelve eighty two, Assyria's Lena H. Wait, Khan what? resigned as throne. <laughs> I think the throne was a person. Just sitting there. Twelve eighty two. I'm a little disappointed. We are six minutes into this video and we haven't seen he once yet. Three Duffy Abbo Crawford died and Wales were won by England. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's probably a really bad translation of um the uh, the last native-born Prince of Wales' his name. Uh, he's actually going to be tried for treason and becomes one of the very first people to be sentenced to hanging, drawing, and quartering, which happens in Shrewsbury, which is right off the, the border of Wales in England. It's in uh, Shropshire. So it's uh, if you're in Birmingham and you were going from Birmingham, actually, I did this. I went from Birmingham up to Wrexham in northern Wales, uh, and I made a stop in Shrewsbury. Uh, don't talk about 1287. 1294. The Madcap Apolidia. What? The huh? Well, you just can't make up words. What is Madcap Apolidia? 1305. Oh, William Wallace. There we go. An anti Japanese Scottish militant. It might as well be. I mean, that would be about as accurate as a lot of the movie was, right? An anti Japanese Scottish militant. Been arrested on court charges and confronted by Britain. So he also then gets uh, tried for treason. And uh, if you go today and stand in um, in Westminster Hall, which is is if you've seen like the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II, where she was lying in state, that's Westminster Hall. That's where William Wallace's trial took place. It's really cool. You can stand in the exact spot where all this stuff went down. And then he was taken to Smithfield, and you can go to Smithfield where he was executed. There's a big plaque on the wall there. Uh, and uh, it's actually not too far up the road from the um, Tower of London, St. Paul's, that area, uh, kind of the eastern part of London. Uh, and you can see where all this stuff happened. You're wrong with you. What are you talking about? The world's first racist. 1307, following the death of Edward, Edward became king of England Edward II. in 2018. Took him a while. But he came back. They're all coming back. So Edward II ends up, well, I'm probably getting ahead of the 12, history 14, here. 12-14, Scotland beat England in the Battle of Penang Burgoon. <laughs> the, the Battle of Penang Burgoon. Uh, so this is uh, one of the most important events in Scottish history. It didn't go down the way Braveheart shows it. It's actually a really fascinating battle when Robert the Bruce leads Scotland in winning their independence in 1314 at Bannockburn, uh, which is, I guess, what that's supposed to be. <laughs> and there's this really crazy moment in that battle where Robert the Bruce basically has single comment, uh, combat against one of the leading noblemen on the English side. And he, 
they're riding at each other and the Bruce kind of like jumps up and comes down on the guy's head with his ax. And he comes out afterwards having gotten really upset that he killed the guy, but he broke his ax in the process. Huh? That sounds like some place in Cambodia. What's Burgoon? Is that some kind of goon burger that I don't want to taste? 1222, King Edward II defeated them. Them. On the battlefield of Poboris. 1227, Church 3, Edward Church. So Edward II basically gets overthrown by his wife and her lover. Uh, he's a really ineffective king, possibly homosexual, and which in and of itself wouldn't have been a major problem, but the suspicion is that he may have been having this relationship with this guy, Piers Gaveston. And whether he was or he, he wasn't, he definitely gave way too much favor to Gaveston, which really rubbed the other nobles the wrong way. And eventually they have Gaveston killed. Eventually Edward II is overthrown and imprisoned and probably killed either deliberately or kind of passively. Uh, either way, uh, Edward III, his son, eventually has to kind of lead this nighttime raid on the castle to take the government back from his mother and her lover. Edward II is killed. Uh, 1377, the death of his brother, Richard II, attracted the British king. I don't want to. So 1377. So uh, 1376, Edward the Black Prince dies. He's the son of Edward III. Richard II then is the Black Prince's son, so he's the grandson of uh, Edward III. And when Edward dies in 1377, Richard comes to the throne at like nine years old. I don't know. <laughs> 1399, Henry Brooks gave birth to the British throne wow. and became Henry IV. Henry Bolingbroke. A lot of these guys, they're, they're named after where they're from or where they're born. Uh, so Henry Bolingbroke is a cousin of Richard II. He's a grandson of Edward III, but not the next in line to the throne after Richard. But he usurps the throne and wins it by by right of conquest, basically. It, it, that doesn't. It's not like later on when you have Richard III being defeated on the battlefield. Henry basically comes in and says, I'm taking the throne. And Richard said, okay, you can have it. I, I mean, that's kind of a better reason to become king than you're an alcoholic. 1413, Henry IV is dead. Oh. And his son, Henry V. But he's also dead, or he's just saying... Just his, and his son, Henry V. 1415, Henry V returns to England after a landslide victory on the battlefield of Arkansas. Agincourt. One of the okay. most iconic battles of all time in medieval history. <laughs> so a landslide victory, bro. He won all the. This votes. is the one where you get the speech and uh, the Shakespeare play, the Band of Brothers speech. You know, for he who today sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. We happy few, we band of brothers. You know that whole thing. On the battlefield, and then Henry killed four, and Edwards climbed to the British throne in 2018. A lot's happening in 2018. I was going to say a lot to look forward to, but then um, that's six years ago. 1509. England have arrested. Henry VIII, and Caitlin Arabio. Wow, just like that. Uh, so we skip all the way ahead to Henry VIII becomes king in 1509, and his wife, that I think he marries the same year, is his brother's widow, uh, Catherine of Aragon. I'm guessing who that's supposed to be. Is this, is this woman? What has she done? What has she done? 1534, a good job ago, as Henry VIII suggested. <laughs> I guess we're talking about this is when Henry's going to break away from the Catholic Church and he's going to become the supreme head of the Church of England. 1547. This is when Henry dies. King Edward IV's hat. 15... 1547. Edward the S Edward the Sixth becomes king when his father Henry dies in January. 49. England is divided into the southern west. Up to the throne in England, says Marley. Thank you, Marley. 1560, the U.S. Senate has passed a bill to reform churches in Scotland. I'm just going to ignore 1571. Don't want to talk about that. 1582, this has sparked a row between the Knights of Edinburgh University in Scotland. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of infighting going on because of religious conflict uh, between Protestants and Catholics, between different kinds of Protestants later. Uh, and this is going to have a direct impact on the 
uh, the Stuarts who are trying to rule Scotland and the Stuart dynasty is just a disaster. Like one after the other, they die under horrible circumstances. Mm. But then they come to the throne of England. Where's my bloody armor gone? 1587, Marley, the Queen of England. Okay, I can see why they were talking about English affairs now. And the Queen of Scots' decision to deliver the goods. And by the goods, do you mean she gets her head chopped off? Northamptonshire on the 8th of February. (laughs) Yeah, and Mary Queen of Scots gets executed. She's actually the next in line to the throne. Uh, Elizabeth I is Queen of England, and her heir is Mary Queen of Scots. And so there's a lot of people who want to put Mary on the throne because she's Catholic. Uh, And eventually, of course, she'll be executed and then it's her son James, James the Sixth of Scotland, who is going to become James the First of England. Fifteen ninety two, Scout and Asian Book Five implements the Church of Scotland's Golden Rule Book, which all has authority over the elderly. Talking about John Knox. Sixteen oh five, Guy Fox. Guy Fox. <laughs> That's a good one. It's F A W K E S. I love that Guy Fox. And others try to undermine Queen James the Fourth, first, and the British Parliament. Six- James the Sixth and first. The reason you see it listed that way is because in Scotland he was James the Sixth, but England hadn't had a King James, and so in England he's James the First. And these are still two separate kingdoms; they're just in a personal union under the crown. Uh, they won't actually become one entity uh, for another century after this. 1906 in England, King James I declared a row between Virginia. Why do they keep having rows around here? There's still no he. England v Scotland, James IV. I'm dying. <laughs> James VI again. This is when his son takes the throne. America was born and became queen. 1721. 17. So Anne is the last Stuart monarch. And she has like 17 kids, but none of them live to adulthood. Uh, and they're all they're all dead by the time she dies. And so they have to bypass dozens of people in the line of succession because they passed an act of settlement uh, that says you have to be Protestant to inherit the throne. And f- future monarchs all have to be descendants then of uh, Sophia, who's the Electress of Hanover and who is the first Protestant in line for the throne. And then her son, George I, who's German, is going to become king. Robert Werber became Walpole, the first president of the United first States. First prime minister. Don't you remember? 1762. The third generation of Potterbury studs has become president. <laughs> and then 1763. Jerry Basriel. Gerald. Gerald. Zori. 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 Is this some kind of like spell I've just cast? I mean, this is about the time of the end of the Seven Years' War. 1766. 76. According to the Declaration of Independence, the new government has accepted it. The world's first steel bridge, an iron bridge, was built in Slovakia. Okay, thanks for the update. Thanks for the news. 1801, Random. the United Kingdom and Uzbekistan are already involved. So this is what... <laughs> the kiss. This is when the United Kingdom is formed. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland at this time. Now it's Northern Ireland, but Great Britain is you know has been formed in in the early 18th century. Now in the early 19th century, you get the United Kingdom. King the Third is the first. George the Third. 1809. He is present. There he is. Well then, he has arrived. The discovery of the ice monster was first discovered in Mary Anning. What ice monster? Hello? 1815, there was a battle for water. Waterloo. 1833, slavery of the British Empire was confirmed in 1833. The Conservatives were born. So, 1833 is the end of slavery in the British Empire. It's already been abolished centuries before this in England. Uh, And a couple decades before this the slave trade is abolished right around the same time that the United States abolishes the slave trade. It's just that the U S doesn't follow suit with actual slavery. 1838 apricot seals, two types of the word stamps. (laughs) So this is about the time that I don't know if that's what it's referring to, but the, the time that they change the rules and basically open up voting to a whole lot of new people. 1842 
At the beginning of the peace, income tax was introduced. It's over. <laughs> 1848, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels has expressed the hypocrisy of the communists. <laughs> Pro-capitalist Karl Marx can't hurt you. He's not real. 1848 is a year of upheaval all throughout uh, Europe, and you see a number of uh, revolutions that happen that year. 1854, Dr. John Snow has discovered water contaminated with the virus. Hello? 18 so there have been a bunch of cholera outbreaks, and they killed a ton of people. And uh, this is when they start to figure out that it's being transmitted through the water supply, and they start to take measures to make things a little less awful in the water supply. 87 virus detective Sherlock Holmes first appears in the book. It's a lot of virus talk going on. 1901, Queen Victoria died and King Edward II takes the throne. That's impressive. He be back. He's back. It was Ed Edward VII. The treaty of that body was signed by Great Britain and France. 1911, Queen Mary is a latecomer. Under the Act of Parliament of 1918. So there is a Queen Mary, but she's the uh, the Queen Consort, and she's married to George V. She becomes, uh, I think, 1911 probably is when they were they had their coronation because they came to the throne in 1910. In more than 30 women were allowed to vote for the first time. Technically true. I think there's like several leaders in the country because Bonalore becomes Prime Minister. Stanley Baldwin is the chairman. And uh, Ramzamat is the president. <laughs> Ramzamat. <laughs> in 1926, the England captain was not disappointed. According to the People's Congress Act of 1928, women have the right to choose men <laughs> above the age of 21, okay? 1929, Ray became McDonald's vice president. Ray! After my autonomy in Canada, I noticed an increase in knowledge from Canada. And then 1934... LNE 34472222 FNOS 22 FNOS snoff snoff snoss Alan is on the verge of a crackdown on The Hague. He's had enough. He's been persecuted for his name. I don't know what's going on <laughs> right now. 1938 Elnira 4468 Doncaster Greenery broke the record of the fastest field. That's 203 kilometers per hour. 1948 King Angie of the United States. I don't know what's going on over there. I think we have to ignore it. Otosa thought it was the first budget and thought it was the word of the first author who thought it was the author's word. <laughs> Roger... S Is that the year that um, India gets its independence? I'm guessing maybe that's what that was. And here we're talking about Roger Bannister, who's, uh, who's buried at Westminster Abbey. Steyer had four minutes to go. Breaks the four-minute mile for the first time. <laughs> okay. I got some bad it law. 1965, it is dead. Uh, the 1967... We've only had one appearance by he in this one. This is act. Legalizes men over the age of 21. I think this is probably the act that legalizes homosexuality, which had been a criminal offense to that point. Finally. Before, when you reached 21, it, that was it. Made it pretty tricky for women to choose men over 21. 1971, the Liberal Democrats, a few days before the British digital currency. They got like crypto going on in the past. 1984, the attack on the British miners was a huge explosion and a struggle against the government's ban on British coal mining. Marguerite Salesia. <laughs> I mean, is that, was there a coal miner strike at that time? I think maybe it had something to do with that. 1986, the soap opera's Easter drama became the most popular show in the UK with 30.1 million mirrors. That's a lot of mirrors. <laughs> 1996, Dolly became the first mammal produced by Coke. He Dolly was, <laughs> was the first cloned animal. It was a sheep, and I think it was Scotland. He became president he of Tanzania. Because why not? 2003, Britain and the United States invades Iraq. That's true. It was just some money. Uh, 2014, Scottish independence was transferred to the Soviet Union and moved quietly. <laughs> so Scotland gets its own devolved parliament. Uh, and, you know, there's a movement towards uh, independence, but the vote goes against it. Okay. Scotland's gone. That's just part of the Soviet Union now. Just write it off. Don't worry about it. Sorry, 2016... Britain voted through the European Union and Qatar. 
2018, the Prophet Muhammad was born in Cambridge. Oh, just in okay. Cambridge. I didn't know that. 2019, the resolution referred to the Brexit deal as a surrender to the current public and the largest Brexit. recall conference in history failed. 2021, 70 year old British Princess Elizabeth II will take over the British throne on Thursday and then. Queen Elizabeth II dies at age 96, damn. From Thursday to now, that aged her quite a lot. And then 2023, the king is Charles III, Camilla III. Camilla is king and throne of England. <laughs> Camilla is throne of England. And president of Camilla and other parts of the Commonwealth. All hail Camilla, the true king. That's impressive. Is that it? That's Tower Bridge? All right, that was fun. It's always really entertaining to kind of talk about real history in the midst of laughing at badly translated history. So like I said, check out the links down in the description, not only to the original content. Give them a subscribe if you like this stuff and want to see more of it. Let's push him over 100,000 subscribers. But also, if you want to check out my reactions to some of his other uh, badly translated history that he's done, those links are in the description as well. Thanks for watching.